hey folks welcome back to the channel and i hope you're enjoying life and having fun um it's been a while since i recorded any new episodes unfortunately i wasn't there mentally um but here i am in a new episode of a new uh, series called mathematics of programming languages um you can think of this uh, new series as a sequel to the previous one which was how to build a compiler with llvm and mlir in the previous season, we created a super simple and basic compiler. We learned about basics of LLVM and MLIR, and we created a boilerplate or and a platform to develop a programming languages in, and a compiler that includes a uh, parser, a JIT engine, code generation pipeline, and a few other bits and pieces. Um, we created all that. We laid down the groundwork, but um, but didn't, uh, what we didn't do was to come up with a standard or a specification for the string language, um, which is a great deal. Uh, we didn't do, we didn't talk about any specific features of string. We didn't uh, talk about the functionalities of string and how it works, uh, none of that. We didn't design the language. Um, Basically, that's what we're going to focus on this video series. Uh, we're going to like we're going to try to create a specification for Siri. We're going to design the language. Um, sorry. Um, not all programming languages have a specification, obviously. Uh, but having a specification to begin with uh, brings clarity to uh, for uh, for the users and developers as well. Uh, we're going to create a compiler after all, and if we have a blueprint of the language, like different features, different functionalities, it would make our lives much easier to design the compiler. Uh, we could have just implement uh, like Pico specification for another language, like a uh, scheme, like uh, the sixth revision of a scheme uh, specification, or Common Lisp, or C++, or in fact, any other specification that uh, we fancy and implement that one. But um, by doing that, we literally created another, like the same programming language. There's nothing fun about that. We do, and since one of the main uh, goals of Serene is to understand how a programming language works, uh, it makes sense to come up with our own specification or try to design our own language to understand uh, programming languages uh, better. So that's out of the window. Um, another option for us is to actually start this, like start writing code and designing uh, the language as we go, like based on our intuition. Many languages have done this before. Um, they come up with a, like a specification as they go along coding their interpreter or uh, compiler over the years and they had to go through many iterations uh, obviously we have to do the same like we're going to go through iterations as well but uh, they didn't uh, come up with a standard first um, a few months ago i guess i saw a post on linkedin uh, a small group of people created an interpreter for a new language uh, in go um, it seemed uh, exciting and interesting to me so i checked uh, checked it out um li literally they took the same approach they just started creating whatever seemed right to them and at the end of the day it was like any other programming language it has like arrays it has like a for loop it kind of uh, you could have seen the similarities between that language and go itself because they were using Go and, you know, uh, kind of using Go on its own influenced their de decision making while they were working on the language. Um, that's a way to go. Depends on uh, like what your goal is. It can be an option. But another option that I really like to do and we're going to do in this video series is to actually take advantage of about 100 years of mathematics and computer science and design our language from scratch. Um, basically, um, there's a huge, like a, there's a, like a vast ocean of uh, information for us uh, out there that we can use to design our language, right? 
so many people who work on this field like so many different research uh, researchers and so many great works uh, from early 20th century uh, mathematicians actually worked on some um, ideas and groundwork for uh, that later on became computer science uh, we can use all that to you know design our language and that way we're going to understand how program languages work which is our goal uh, like our ultimate goal but in order to do that we need to you know find a uh, location or find a starting point uh, to uh, start our studies um, that can be a, like a tricky thing to do but um, after all all of us like we're engineers right we uh, we used a few languages in our career so far and we have some experience that we can rely on based on our experience we can actually come up with some initial ideas on where to look like uh, basically for example i prefer functional programming and i used to prefer uh, dynamic type systems and some you know I, I i i have my own preference so i have some initial initial thoughts i can look up uh, i can actually start studying them um, and then come up with some a list of alternatives to like functional programming or dynamic type system or any other idea that i might have and then evaluate my ideas and the alternatives and later on when i learned like more uh, then i can actually say whether or not my initial idea uh, was good or not um so like in my case i prefer program like a functional programming language so obviously i like serine to be a functional program like a functional programming language I used to prefer dynamic type systems, not anymore, but still I need to study and figure out uh, which one suits my need, uh, suits my needs better, right? So that's what we're going to do. And uh, based on that, there's like three major theories that we can start from type theory, category theory, and proof theory. We're going to look in, <clears throat> you go, we're going to look at all three in this video series. Um, all three are kind of uh, trying to describe the same world, but from this, uh, different perspectives. Um, in fact, like um, it's a common workflow that whatever idea you have, you can use one of these three frameworks they're not frameworks but like you can frame your idea in one of uh, these three theories and try to uh, validate your idea using the other two uh, they all have to kind of uh, result in the same thing um, there's a few papers that we need to look at like uh, the list papers actually uh, there's a mistake there. We're going to look at the original uh, paper that uh, John McCarthy actually wrote many years ago. That was the beginning of Lisp and some other uh, papers related uh, related to that. And also some other non-Lisp related papers that might be interesting to us. But uh, we're going to talk about them way in the future. Um, but in order to actually... Uh, be able to study effective uh, more efficiently and be more effective with our studies and how in general with the task of designing and specification we need some tools and the most important tool is for us to develop <clears throat> some mathematical skills we need to learn about um, like classical logic and some other branches of logic set theory um, and discrete mathematics in general and um, I really like for uh, this video series to be um, self-contained as much as possible so uh, I'm going to start from basics uh, we're going to cover uh, what is math what mathematics is and why do we need mathematics um, it, it might sound surprising to you you might say oh, I don't I, I know what mathematics is right why like this is a waste of time but actually um i guess it was like two months ago uh, i came across uh, a discussion on twitter uh, a 
PhD student. I guess uh, he was like a PhD student in, in chemistry or something like that. Wrote a long thread in Twitter uh, and claiming that mathematics it is not what you think it is and we shouldn't trust uh, mathematics all the time. Um, his main point was right, like he was right about uh, all that, like mathematics is just a language. You can create gibberish with mathematics as well. You can't, just because the mathematics is there doesn't mean that you can rely on it. But uh, the way he actually framed his argument made me realize that not everybody understands mathematics uh, well, right? Uh, to be fair, it clicked for me like way after college. So during college and like high school and stuff like that, I had no idea. I just, to me, mathematics was just like numbers. But when it clicked for me, I was like, oh, now I get it. Now I see why mathematics is such an important tool and everybody should know about it, uh, right? And when it, when it clicks for you, for some reason, you you start to, uh, you start to think that ah, it's so obvious. Other people should know about this, as well, right? But seeing that discussion actually made me realize that okay, that's not the case. Not everyone knows about why mathematics is important. Like I talked about this uh, the idea of this video series with a bunch of people, like uh, some of my friends and my colleagues. Uh, to my surprise, the majority of them was like, ah, who cares about the mathematics? It's so academic, like it's different from the uh, how market works. And like in practice, we're not using mathematics that much. And it was really, really surprising to me because that's not what I see. Like everything that we do, especially in program, like as a software engineer is related to mathematics you like we don't most of the time we don't even know that we're doing mathematics but we do and knowing mathematics and understanding mathematics the, in the best way possible will help us to uh, grow even more and be even better at our jobs um that's why i i i really i'm i'm really interested about including uh this topic in this video series um probably next episode would be uh, all about that and it's a tricky topic to discuss but i'm excited about it we're going to have try to develop some uh, techniques and uh, skills on mathematical thinking and then we're going to start uh, start from discrete mathematics especially logic and set theory since we're going to use them quite a lot we're going to uh, look into lambda calculus uh, since it, that's uh, kind of the foundation of many theories uh, that we're going to look into and simply type lambda calculus. And then our first major theory would be the type theory. We're going to start by type theory. Uh, and then we move to the rest. Um, I try to cover the basics at first, but I'm not going to uh, over like go over kill on it and uh, later on if we need anything uh, as a requirement we're going to cover that when we need it and finally we're going to study a little bit of uh, history of computer science and mathematics basically uh, i believe that um, learning about the history of any field in science is really helpful because uh, it happens to me many times, like I study physics quite a lot when I learn about a new theory or about, uh, I don't know, something, I learn something new, all of a sudden my brains start to make some scenarios or like thoughts, uh, like I try to, you know, think about the subjects that I've learned and come up with some ideas and in my head, I'm like, ooh, I'm such a genius. I came up with this new idea that can be like the next big thing. But the fact is, I'm not a special at all. Like if I, uh, so usually I write down my idea and I go back and um, learn about the history of the subject that I've learned. And almost all the time, some other people thought about the same thing and actually did the research and everything and they they're way ahead of me right so they see some stuff that i didn't uh occasionally there's some some stuff that uh, you know are new but uh 
um, still, if I learn about the history, there's so much there that can help me to think better. That applies to computer science as mathematics and mathematics as well. That's why we're going to do it. But I try to incorporate uh, this kind of stuff uh, throughout the uh, series. Uh, and as I wrote down, history can be a great guide to us. Um, a disclaimer, I'm not a professional mathematician. I'm just sharing my uh, own research and what I've learned throughout the years. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, at the end of the day, we should take a scientific approach, uh, nullius in verba, which means kind of roughly translate to see for yourself. You have like, I share my ideas and whatever I learn, it's up to you um, to kind of verify them and have your own journey to do your own math, to see for yourself, basically. Uh, don't take my word for granted. Whatever I, I say in this video series is just a result of my research and what I've learned. That doesn't mean uh, they must be true. Everyone makes mistakes and that includes me as well. So see for yourself. And finally, um, if you have any thoughts or any ideas or you want to share a paper that you think might be uh, relevant to our uh, topic of discussion or to Serene as well or if you even have a question uh, please reach, reach out to me you can uh, use the comment section down below uh, or um, I have my contact information on my website you can check it out and send me an email or whatever I I, I would love to discuss uh, this kind of stuff with you and um, Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope to see you in the next uh, episode as well. And if you like what I do, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to my channel. It, it's going to help me quite a lot. Thank you and uh, see you in the next episode.